Hi, as you can see today, I want to talk about Wi-Fi 6. Uh, but before we start, uh, if you have Wi-Fi 6, does that mean uh, there have been like Wi-Fi 5, 4, 3, 2, 1? Kind of. Uh, we actually had Wi-Fi 5 and 4, uh, and the first three were never officially named Wi-Fi 1, 2, 3. Now to better understand what exactly is going on, let's quickly talk about Wi-Fi itself. Wi-Fi is actually a trademark of Wi-Fi Alliance, and it is the most commonly used wireless communications technology. In fact, it is the primary medium for the global internet traffic. You can find Wi-Fi everywhere, at home, at work, at coffee shops, restaurants, shopping malls, airports, even airplanes. It is so common everywhere that some coffee shops and restaurants no longer offer Wi-Fi just to be a little bit different. So this very popular Wi-Fi is actually based on IEEE communications standard 802.11. And if you're wondering where you have seen that number, <laughs> you probably seen it on your wireless router's box, maybe something like this one. This 802.11 standard has actually improved over the years, with each generation bringing faster speeds, lower latency, and better user experience. So Wi-Fi 6, which is the latest generation of Wi-Fi, is actually 802.11ax, but it is just easier to say Wi-Fi 6. Now, how is this Wi-Fi 6 any different from its previous generation, which was Wi-Fi 5 or 802.11ac? As you can see, the Wi-Fi 5 is actually single band, whereas the Wi-Fi 6 is dual band. That means if your current router is actually Wi-Fi 5 and you have a 5 GHz wireless network and a 2.4 GHz wireless network, only the 5 GHz one is actually Wi-Fi 5 and the other one is Wi-Fi 4. Another difference as you can see here is that Wi-Fi 6 actually offers higher data rates. These are only theoretical numbers. In real life though, where usually there are many devices connected to the network, and there's also all kinds of interferences, for example with the neighboring Wi-Fi, the real speed is usually very much lower than this number. And it will only get worse in the future, because we will have more and more wireless routers and access points, and there will be more and more devices connected to these wireless networks. So that's why the latest generation of Wi-Fi, which is Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax, is actually trying to bring high efficiency to the wireless networks. And even though the maximum theoretical speed is only about 30% higher than Wi-Fi 5, the real speed in dense and crowded wireless environments is expected to be around 4 times higher than Wi-Fi 5, which is really good. So how does Wi-Fi 6 actually do that? First off, it takes advantage of better power control methods, which can help to reduce the power consumption as well as avoiding interference with other wireless networks. For example, there's a feature called Target Wake Time or TWT, which actually reduces power consumption and medium contention by letting devices go to those states until they actually need to access the medium. This has improved network efficiency as well as device battery life, which is really good for Internet of Things. Or there is another feature called Spatial Frequency Reuse. It actually uses some techniques such as coloring and adaptive power threshold to help the device to differentiate transmission in its own network from transmission in the neighboring network. As a result, this can increase the spatial reuse. Or there are other features such as OFDMA that increases network efficiency by sharing channels and lowering the latency for the uplink and downlink. Or multiple user MIMO, which in Wi-Fi 6, unlike in Wi-Fi 5, it is actually available for uplink and downlink. This enables the router or the access point to handle more devices at the same time. There is also 1024 QAM modulation in Wi-Fi 6, which compared to Wi-Fi 5, it can encode more data in the same amount of spectrum, which essentially means it provides faster throughput and speed. It also has the latest generation of Wi-Fi security, which is WPA3. 
So overall, there is obviously some improvements in Wi-Fi 6. I mean, the main focus, as I said, uh, has been on high efficiency, which is very important because the wireless networks are getting more and more crowded. We have Internet of Things, uh, smart home devices, even the light bulbs are connected to Wi-Fi these days. So Wi-Fi's are getting busier, more crowded, more congested. There's also interference. So basically, all of that makes it harder to send and receive data over Wi-Fi. And that's why it is very important to make things a little bit more efficient in the Wi-Fi world. And that is exactly what Wi-Fi 6 is actually trying to do. So Wi-Fi 6 is already here. I mean, you can buy a Wi-Fi 6 wireless router today. I'm actually going to add uh, the links to some of those in the video description in case you want to check them out. I mean, even the new laptops, new smartphones, they're starting to support Wi-Fi 6. So the question is, should I buy a Wi-Fi 6 wireless router? I mean, why not? If I know I need to switch to a new wireless router, then I would definitely consider looking for a Wi-Fi 6 one. Now, the second question could be, how would I know if I need to switch to a new wireless router? Good question. That is, in fact, the subject of one of my videos. The link is right there, also in the video description. In that video, I actually go over five reasons, five points, that if any of them is true, then I would know that I need a new wireless router. So definitely check that out if you're interested. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you liked it. Hit that like button if you did, share it if you think others might like it too, and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this. Thank you again, and I will see you next time.